My name is Valerie Gonzalez and I am the CCP Admissions Counselor here at Kent State Ashtabula. Today we're going to be going over the presentation that I do for CCP Information Nights at our local area city schools um, and let's dive right in. As an agenda, um, we're going to be going over what College Credit Plus is, uh, also known as CCP. Um, we'll be talking about advantages and risks of participation, enrollment options, requirements in the application process, high school requirements, CCP particularly at Kent State Ashtabula, and any questions. Um, what is College Credit Plus? It is a program that was launched in 2015-2016. Before that, it was known as PSEO, Post-Secondary Educational Opportunity. It increases college access and enrollment. It provides students with choices and challenges and encourages students to pursue post-secondary opportunities um, and options after high school graduation. Obviously, that being the goal, we want students to have these college credits to take into college. How does it work? It's open to college ready students entering grades seven through 12. Students must successfully complete the courses in order to earn the credits. And even if a student fails or withdraws from the course, the college transcript and high school transcript will reflect the student's final grade. So that's very important. No matter what the grade is for the student, if it's withdrawal failure, A, B, C, the grade will be transcripted on college credit permanently for the student. Um, and the high school transcript will match the college trans transcript with the course grade. Students must be enrolled in college and secondary school. Students earn, again, transcripted college and high school credit upon course completion. And there may be a weighing of course grades depending on your high school. Um, a great question to ask your guidance counselor. There are three enrollment options. There is the summer semester, fall, and spring semesters. The fall and the spring semesters are the traditional 16-week courses. The summer semester is broken up into three sessions and the classes can be either a five or eight week course. It is very intensive to start in the summer. We do not recommend that for first year CCP students um, do summer classes. We recommend them taking fall or spring first and getting the hang of what a college prep course is like and maybe then the following summer taking summer courses. However, if you are a student that's confident that you will succeed in the summer or your very first time, then um, the option is always there and available for you. Some advantages and risks are, some advantages are that it expands the high school curriculum with academically challenging courses. It allows students to pursue special interests in depth. So say that your student loves to write papers. Then taking a college writing one class could be very beneficial to their interests. It could help them um, in better their writing or um, understand different literature. Uh, there's financial benefits, of course, for our public school students. It is free. Um, for private school students, you can apply for funding through the state of Ohio. Opportunities for career exploration for students. Of course, that's so important um, because in seventh grade, you may not know what you like or what you don't like, or really in any grade. And it may reduce time to complete a college degree. And the reason we say may is um, there is things that we call pathways for students. And those are when a student comes to us and says, for example, I want to be a nurse. Um, nursing is what I want to do. My family is full of nurses, so that's what I want to go into. And um, the advisors say, okay, great. Um, then we're going to take classes that are going to complete the prerequisites for the nursing program for the application. So they take the prerequisites and they graduate and they decide you know, I, I've graduated, I've decided I don't want to be a nurse anymore. I'm going to pursue psychology. Some of the prerequisites that were made for the nursing program may not apply in the same sense for the psychology program. They may be taken as electives instead of the general requirements. Uh, and so that is where it may reduce time if you change your mind or if you're going on a direct path instead of a general requirement path. Um, it, be, may be reduced because you may be taking classes you may not need if you change your mind. 
um, access to college campus resources. We have a wonderful library that's in person and virtual. Um, we have tutoring, the writing center, the testing center, all of that is free to Kent State students um, and that's what CCP students are. Uh, it is a diverse learning environment and that is an advantage um, because you can see different points of view. Um, there is different age ranges, um, you know, students that are younger could learn from students that are older and students that are older can learn from the students that are younger. Different perspectives. And you can take classes at your high school if your high school has classes that are through our program. Um, not all high schools do, uh, so ask your guidance counselor. Um, you can take classes online, hybrid, or here at the university on our campus. Some risks and differences about the program is that it is an increased academic rigor and student responsibility for learning. Um, students in college have to be self-sufficient. They have to push themselves to do their homework, to do their reading before class. Um, in high school, you may be given time to do readings in class um, and you wouldn't have that in college. College classes are typically two days a week and they're an hour and 15 minutes. So all the time spent in there is particularly on the lesson. Reading has to be done before then, assignments have to be done before, um, and it is student initiated. Students have to do, have to have that re um, responsibility to learn and push themselves to do it. Um, reduced opportunities for participation in high school activities or athletics. Your academics will always come first to your athletics. Um, if you schedule the class that's in the afternoon and all of a sudden you have baseball practice or basketball practice or football practice or cheerleading, um, you will have to attend your classes before um, you decide you go to your games because your classes are going to be taken uh, attendance. If you have a test and it interferes with anything, your academics do come first. There can be some social discomfort if we have a seventh grader that's sitting in a college classroom. Um, that can be uncomfortable for the seventh grader. Um, we do have now what's called a maturity questionnaire because college classes can have uh, mature content. Um, and as CCP students, uh, the professors are not told you're CCP. You are a, stu a college student that's in their class and they will teach according to college standards. The class schedules, of course, are different. In high school, you go to class typically five days a week um, for an hour. And in college, again, it's that two day a week, typical an hour and 15 minute class. Um, so you do have to take that into consideration. The impact on high school GPA and class standing is that your grades that you get in the college, no matter if you want them or not, will go on your high school transcript as well. So if you're taking a class to replace a high school requirement, then you have to have that grade, whether you pass that college class or not. Um, you do create a permanent GPA and transcript. Uh, it is increased travel and study time. If you're traveling here to our campus, you may live further away than you do to your high school. So you have to consider travel time in there. And of course, study time, you have to make sure you're studying for your classes before you go into your, your um, class time. FERPA regulations do impact parent involvement. So um, in high school, sometimes um, parents are used as kind of the buffer between the student and the teacher. Um, that way, you know, if your student's having a hard time or your teacher is reaching out, letting you know, you know, maybe your student hasn't completed assignments. In college, it is not that way. There is not a professor in parent relationship. The communication will always be between the student and the professor. Um, a lot of the times the professors will not respond to a parent um, because it is the student ultimately that has to do the talking for themselves and advocating for themselves. A parent can be involved in the advising process or the admissions process if the FERPA is waived. And if you're interested in waiving the FERPA, you can always speak to me as the admissions counselor or to the academic advisor. Um, there always has to be permission from the student, no matter if they're in seventh grade or in 12th grade in order for a parent to know about the student education records. 
Um, there are financial obligations for course failures or withdrawal. Um, so if you're withdrawing past a certain date, you will have to pay that class back. Um, if you withdraw in the time that you're getting a 100% refund, then that obviously would not impact um, the student financially. But if you're withdrawing in the middle of the semester past withdrawal periods, then you would be um, receiving a withdrawal and would have to pay that back. Or if you failed your class, of course, you would have to pay for that back. Some differences between high school and college we already talked about. We'll read through some examples. So for tests, um, typically in high school, tests are sometimes given weekly or at the end of a chapter. In college, tests are generally fewer in number and cover more material. I had a college class where the only grades in the entire class were four tests that we took throughout the semester. And if you didn't do great on those tests, then you didn't do great in the class. So that is very different um, from having homework to kind of buffer the grade and or being able to retake or turn in your homework late. That obviously is not a thing in college. We'll talk about knowledge acquisition. In high school, information is provided mostly in class and out of class research is minimal. In college, coursework will generally require more independent thinking, um, longer writing assignments, and out of class research. So we have this wonderful expansive library and we want you to know how to use the library to do your own research to come up with your, um, your thinking for your assignments. So that is very different from generally in high school, you're given um, a book to read and what to write after, or a prompt to write after. Um, some more differences are um, accommodations. So in high school, parents and students work with high school staff to determine what assistance or accommodations can be made for students with IEPs or 504s. In college, the students must work directly with the college staff to determine if the accommodations are needed. IEPs and 504s. 04 plans may or may not be included in the discussions. So you do have, the student has to advocate for themselves for um, their learning disability with our accessibility services, which um, I will provide any information at the end of the um, presentation for that. Um, deciding to participate in doing the research, um, there are some questions that you should ask yourself, like, are you college ready? Um, trans we'll talk about transferability of college courses, some high school graduation requirements, high school versus college schedules, which we already touched on a little bit, transportation and extracurricular activities. So there is a difference between transferability and applicability. Um, certain general education and technical courses will transfer, especially from one Ohio public college to another Ohio public college. When it gets to private schools, they kind of make their own decisions on what they want to accept for CCP. So if you are a high school student and you have your heart set on a private school, um, it would be best to contact them and ask them if they're willing to take CCP classes or what CCP classes they're willing to take. Sometimes private schools can say, you know, if you're going to get a degree through us, then you have to have the courses through us. Um, so we don't want any surprises at the end of your high school career. You've taken all these CCP classes and all, your, your college is saying they're not accepting them. So always, always contact the college where you plan to transfer credit. And if Ohio Public College is where you want to go, then there is a transfer guide um, included on the screen, transfercredit.ohio.gov, and you can check classes that are going to transfer to each Ohio public institution. Um, this is a slide saying that all public secondary schools and public higher education institutions must participate in this program, but the non-public secondary schools and the non-public colleges or institutions may participate if they want to, but they do not have to by any means. Um, high school athletic eligibility. CCP students can still be high school athletes. You would just follow the OHSAA guidelines, um, which are on our website. Athletic eligibility requires students to pass five one credit courses or equivalent per grading period, and summer does not apply. Eligibility is determined on a quarterly basis and college midterm grades may be required for eligibility purposes. So keep your, those GPAs up. Considering the options, 
There is a college course load in limit that you can take in CCP. Um, there's a limit of 30 credits per year. That's including high school and college credits. Three or more credit hour college courses equals one high school unit. So that it can get confusing and the guidance counselors have always been a great support for their students to determine if they're gonna be over their hours or, um, or if they're going to be just under. Um, there is a limit of 120 credits maximum, even if beginning CCP in seventh grade. The reason there is a limit of 120 credits is because that's a bachelor's degree and you can't pursue graduate classes in CCP. You cannot attend beyond high school senior year, so the minute that you receive your diploma, then you are no longer considered a CCP student and always verify your course choices with your guidance counselor to make sure that you are on track to fulfill your graduation requirements. So this is an option A. Um, this is not the standard option, that's option B for CCP. However, um, if you choose to self-pay for your college classes, you will pay at the standard rate of tuition fees and textbooks at the university you decide to attend. Um, under option A, students can choose to earn college credit and high school credit or only college credit, but the students must inform the school of their choice, um, the college of their choice for um, the courses and letting them know that they are choosing option A. However, this typically occurs once the student has gone over allotted credit hours per academic year. So if you're over that 20 that 30 credit hours for the year, but you have one more class you want to take, you can choose to pay for that class out of pocket um, tuition fees and books. Um, the cost of the program at that point would be funded entirely by the student and their family, and the tuition and fees would be paid directly to us, the university, or the university of choice. So if a student enrolls in more than 30 credits for the year, the school will discuss with the student whether they need to drop the course prior to the no-fault withdrawal date or pay for the entire course, including tuition, fees, and books at the college's standard rate. This option B is where all college course tuition, fees, and textbooks will be paid by the state of Ohio. And it's supported by the school's foundation funds and the college's funds. Option B is the default or the standard option of College Credit Plus. The student earns both high school and college credit at no cost to the student or their family unless they earn a grade of withdrawal, failure, non-attending, F, or stopped attending failure. The final date to change the election of option A or option B is on or before the college's no-fault withdrawal date. So what's next? The parent and student requirements are that you attend a high school informational meeting. If you're watching this video, then that would be the informational meeting. You would complete the intent to participate form by April 1st, which is on our website. This is what the intent to participate form looks like from the state of Ohio. Your high school may have its own personalized letter of intent, so check with your guidance counselor to see if they do. You would turn this form in, and by no means does you turning in your letter of intent mean that you will 100% do CCP. It's just letting your school know, hey, I'm interested in CCP, save some funds for my student to attend CCP. You can change your mind at any point. There is no obligation for you to do CCP. Again, it's just letting your school know that you may be interested. By signing the form, um, you do have to verify that you have met with a guidance counselor. So that is a requirement for the letter of intent is, you, is the student meeting with the guidance counselor and assessing if CCP is the right choice. Um, you would complete the CCP application at the colleges of choice and meet remediation free standards and or college and university admission criteria, which we will talk about. So the student accessibility assessment exams um, students' scores must show that they are ready for college-level courses in at least one subtest on an exam. So that exam could be the ACT, the SAT, or the Accuplacer placement test. Colleges and universities will review the student scores using statewide standards, which we will talk about in the next slide. 
Um, as a note, additional options for eligibility determination are being considered, but will not be finalized until the spring of 2022. So if there is a change to these eligibility exams, I will let your guidance counselor know and they will send out an email letting um, any interested students know that the, el the eligibility guidelines have changed. But as of now, we're using testing scores. These are the Ohio remediation free standards. You can see here um, there is an English subscore, reading subscore, and math subscore for ACT and SAT. So for example, a student can be accepted into the CCP program by their 18 English subscore, but say they got an 18 and a 14 in reading, then they would be accepted in English and they would be able to take English classes but they would not be able to take reading classes because they did not test into reading or math. If a student is too young to take the ACT or the SAT or does not want to, you can take the AccuPlace replacement test on our campus, which tests for reading and writing. You need to have an, a 250 in reading or a five in writing in order to be accepted into the program. Same rules apply if you get accepted in for reading or writing, um, but you failed the other reading or writing, then you would not be able to take the class that you did not score into the program on. If you're interested in math classes, you do have to test into the program using reading or writing and then take the math test, but you do have to be accepted on reading or writing first before you can take um, the Alex math placement assessment. This talks about high school requirements. CCP courses can satisfy high school graduation requirements. School counselors can help students understand the graduation requirements and CCP course substitutions. So that is why we have you meet with your guidance counselor to ensure that you understand the substitutions and uh, the requirements that are expected of the students. Um, some high schools have more requirements for graduation than the state minimum. Again, that's a guidance counselor question. Uh, no high school graduation requirement may be waived, and CCP does not replace the requirements to earn a high school diploma. Again, we stress we know that by doing CCP, you're going above and beyond the traditional high school requirements. However, you are told the requirements and you will have to meet them um, in order to, to receive your diploma. If your course is ever being questioned for a high school graduation requirement, the principal may require a course syllabus from the university course, which we have here. Um, and any mediation of disputes will be determined by the State Board of Education. Any school that I work with has always said that this has never happened. However, we are required to let you know of this. In order to grant high school credit, the students must provide official grades to the high school for GPA and class rank calculations within four weeks after the semester ends. The high school transcript must reflect each university course. Grades earned in the university courses are and must be included in the GPA and class rank, and courses must be taken for a letter grade, no pass or fail courses, um, so you can't take yoga for pass or fail. So this is a side talking, we're gonna be going into um, College Credit Plus, particularly here at Kent State Ashtabula. This is our flash facts sheet, which just talks about Kent State Ashtabula, our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one, and our average class size is about 14 students. Um, on the back side of it, talks about the majors and programs that we have here, 100%, um, so that is awesome, our associates and bachelor's degrees and certificate programs. Let's talk about course choices and CCP pathways. There is a, um, a registration process for course scheduling. We do allow all traditional um, and non-traditional students that are in college register for classes before CCP students. Um, so students will be notified of the date that they can register for courses. There is course selection that CCP students have to choose from, and that is the Kent Core. Those are the general requirements for any Kent State degree. If you are on a pathway to one of our allied health programs, then you would be doing prerequisites for the application to that program. Any schedule changes will go through an advisor and midterm and final grades will be given to the student 
And of course, random classes do not equal a degree, so we will have you either on a, a general requirement path or on a pathway to one of our allied health programs. This is a sampling of different courses available and that our students have taken, understanding of music, foreign language, college writing one and two, all great classes. Students will have access to use of university services. Our academic advisors are Aaron Franklin and Irene Scolaris. Our college resources include the library, computer labs, writing center, tutoring, all free. Um, and student accessibility services for students with an IEP or 504 will go through our accessibility coordinator, which is also Irene Scolaris. This talks about the College Credit Plus pathways to our five allied health programs. We have nursing, physical therapy assistant, occupational therapy assistant, radiologic technology, and respiratory therapy. Um, those are our five allied health and you can take the prerequisites while you're in high school to go straight and apply into the program after you graduate. Um, you could take close courses in biological sciences, psychology, sociology, math, government, and more, and experience our state-of-the-art labs, including the only cadaver lab between Cleveland and Erie. For taking classes, students must complete their first 15 credits in level one courses, which include transferable courses, courses in IT, computer science, anatomy and physiology, or foreign language, courses that are part of a technical certificate, courses that are part of a 15 or 30 credit pathway, and courses in study skills, academic, or career success. Once a student completes the first 15 credit hours in level one, he or she can enroll in level two courses. And level two courses are any other allowable college courses for which a student meets the prerequisites. The good thing about this is you will always meet with an advisor each semester so they know which, cl which classes you can register for and you can be ensured that you're gonna, you have the eligibility to be in them. Um, just as a reminder, always research your course options and select courses that will apply towards a certificate or college degree program and know how those courses will apply towards your intended college degree. If you know that you want to go towards a certain degree when you graduate, then make sure you know how the classes that you're taking are going to affect that. Um, some non-allowable courses include private applied courses with one-on-one -on -one instruction, such as performing art lessons, courses with high fees, study abroad courses, physical education courses, pass-fail graded courses, and remedial courses or sectarian and religious courses. There is an underperforming rule. It's new state policy for CCP probation and CCP dismissal. After the end of the semester, colleges must send student grades and cumulative GPA to the secondary schools and the secondary schools must review GPA to determine if CCP probation or CCP dismissal applies to each student. If the student attends more than one college, the GPAs must be averaged to determine a CCP GPA. CCP probation is if a student has a cumulative GPA of lower than 2.0 in the college courses, or if a student withdraws from or receives no credit for two or more courses in the same term. CCP dismissal is when a student is placed, uh, has failed to increase their GPA to above a 2.0 in College Credit Plus courses during the probation term. Once a student is dismissed from the program, the student may not enroll in college courses for the following college term. After one college term on CCP dismissal, the student may submit an appeal to request the secondary school to allow the student to participate in CCP again. So say that you had a really rough semester, maybe something happened at home, um, you moved and it really affected the way you completed your classes and you were dismissed. Um, after that dismissal term um, that you have to take once you've been dismissed, you can submit an appeal to your high school asking to let you take CCP again. Um, you would explain you know, what had happened and how you plan to do better in courses and they could, you could essentially be, get back into the program. Student requirements after admission into the College Credit Plus program is you will have to attend an orientation and advising appointment. Um, the orientation will be held in the summer and must be done prior to the academic advising appointment. The placement assessments, um, if you have to take them or you want to take them, have to be done. Um, so this includes the Alex assessment for math. 
um, follow Kent State student policies and attend classes and maintain a strong GPA. What happens if you move? You would want to let us know as soon as possible. It could affect who we're billing for your classes. If you decide you want to drop a class, um, do so as soon as possible so you're um, in the withdrawal periods instead of at the end of the semester. If you receive a grade of F or an unattending F, you will have to pay the courses back to your high school. If you earn a grade you don't think is fair, um, any disputes are Docu if you have documentation of why you think it's unfair, your professor could also provide documentation of why they think it's fair, and those documentations would go to a student complaint committee, which is composed of faculty, staff, and students, um, and they would then read everybody's side and determine the outcome. And if you as a parent want information on your student, there is certain information that you can um, have access to if given permission through a FERPA waiver um, from your student. So again, if you want to know more about the FERPA, please contact me in admissions or your academic advisor. These are important dates, application deadlines. So if you want to apply for the summer, the deadline is April 15th. For the fall, it's June 1st, and for the spring, it's October 15th. We do ask that once you submit an application, please try to submit the permission form, which is two-sided. This is the front, and then there is a maturity questionnaire on the back. If you do not sign the maturity questionnaire um, stating that you understand that these are college classes and there is mature content, then you will not be able to participate in CCP. We do ask that you turn in the permission form, the maturity questionnaire on the back and the high school transcript within two weeks of your application, just so we can keep everything in line and flowing for the students. So what's next? Um, you would submit that letter of intent to, uh, by April 1st to the high schools, to the guidance counselors, apply to the college or university of choice. And if that's Kent State Ashtabula, you would complete the, um, the CCP online application, the CCP permission form, which has the maturity questionnaire on the back. You would request high school transcripts and send us your ACT or SAT scores or if you need to take the AccuPlacer, please give me a call. That way I can get that scheduled for you. And just as a reminder, students and parents provide transportation. This is our contact information, our location. Um, I am Valerie Gonzalez. I am the admissions counselor. Aaron Franklin is the academic advisor. And Irene Scolaris um, does advising, student accessibility services, and career services. I also put on here the Ohio Department of Higher Education College Credit Plus website for additional resources. There's a lot of FAQs for parents, for students, um, so that could be a great website to view with your parent or with your student. That way you can um, see different resources. And that's it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can call me, email me, come in to the office. I am always here to answer your questions. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I will get you to who does know the answer. Um, again, my name is Valerie and thank you so much for watching this information session. <laughs>